In the year 2023, the nine to five bed of the day profited over 500 units on the year. I'm going to be showing you guys how I went about doing that in this video. Hopefully you guys can take and use a lot of these processes that I'm going to talk about in this video to your advantage in the year 2024. And so before we get into any strategies or just touching on really how we were able to do that, I do, I do want to show you guys the chart breakdown of the month to month breakdown. So what you are seeing here is going to be the total bets won on that month, total bets lost in that month, the percent of those bets hitting that month, and then the units profit in that month. What I want to call out to you guys is that the bets won are not going to include any promo bets that had hit, but the units profit obviously will include the promo uh, bets that hit. And I think that's the first starting point that I want to call out to you guys in this video. It's that prize picks and underdog are the two main props sports books that are out there right now. Okay. There's sleeper that's trying to make their way into the game as well, but they're not as big and they don't have as many props out there. Prize picks and underdog are the two that are really the top two in the game. And with that, those two companies throw out various promotions promos throughout the week two of the most popular ones are going to be with prize picks they run out taco tuesday and flex friday and a lot of you guys don't know this i've mentioned this on a couple of videos but i actually interviewed with uh, prize picks to be a part of their social media team because i i really loved what they were doing and in part of that meeting they actually said that they he didn't say it but he basically said it. they don't lose money on those two days which to me is mind-blowing especially taco tuesday because they are pretty much telling you take our money we're giving you guys these elite prop bets. And so let's go ahead and talk about Taco Tuesday to start. And I'll break down some underdog uh, promotions that are out there, some Flex Friday promotions as well. But I want to break down that process of how to go about beating really Taco Tuesday, but also underdog whenever we are getting those significantly discounted squares. So yes, both prize picks and underdog will do this. They'll give us these discounted squares. Prize picks does this every single Tuesday called Taco Tuesday. They'll give us the original prop line. And so I'm using this one from last Tuesday. Sabonis had a PRA points, rebounds, and assist line of 42.5. They bumped it down to 36.5. And so typically speaking on a taco Tuesday, there are going to be three tacos that are presented. Sometimes they do more. Sometimes they do less. Heck during the MLB season, they even hit us with these discount dogs as well, which are the same theme as taco Tuesday. And so those prop bets will have a significantly higher likelihood to hit to cash. And I believe in 2023, they hit it by like, I think it was 80% or so. So like a very good margin. And some of you might be wondering, well, how do you know the percent likelihood for a prop bet to hit when they're discounted like that? And I'm just going to use a college basketball example from DraftKings Sportsbook. This is one way you can do it. There's other various ways. And I'll talk about that here in a second. But let's just say you wanted to bet on, and I'm just going to do the first one, Styles for his points. And this was a discounted prop. It was originally at 12.5 on prize picks or so. And let's say it got bumped down to 10, for instance. Okay, minus 265 for it to hit. And I'm just going to show you guys using this, the odds jam implied probability calculator. So if you type in minus 265 there, you can see it has about a 72% chance to hit. And so that's just a simple way you can kind of go about seeing the likelihood of a taco or discounted prop to hit. Now that's great, right? And so anytime we can begin a bet that has a 72% likelihood where the payout is not going to adjust. And real quickly, for those that don't know the payout structure of prize picks, I'll pull it up. And, and underdog, it's basically the same. And I'm just using prize picks. Underdog is going to be somewhat the same, but this is the payout structure. And so typically speaking with a taco, I either tell people do a two slip bet. That way you already gain a prop bet that, you know, again, has about 80% likelihood to hit. And you pair that up with another prop bet that has a 54% likelihood or more to hit. And for what it's worth, guys, 54% likelihood for a prop bet to hit. Once you take out the juice, okay, that and juice real quick is, and I'll use that DraftKings Sportsbook example again, and I'll use this one has an example here as well. If you were to bet on styles, they DraftKings Sportsbook, all the other sportsbooks are going to put juice into their lines so that either way someone bets on it, they're really not going to lose money on that prop bet. Juice is how they ensure themselves not losing money. And prize picks, given their payout structure, is a little bit different because they don't have juice. They just have the prop lines that are out there. Okay. So when you pair a prop bet with a taco, that has a 54% likelihood to hit, the prop that has a 54% likelihood to hit with a taco that's already significantly discounted, that has an 80% likelihood to hit, you are gaining a significant mathematical edge on prize picks. So what you can do is either pair 
a taco or discount up. And on prize picks, you can do up to five dollars. You can do five bets individually five times. You can pair the discounted taco, do that five times with good EV bets. And that's what it means when a prop bet has a 54% likelihood or more to hit. You can pair those good EV bets up five individual times with a taco. And all you need on the day is going to be six prop bets to hit. You're going to end up with at $15 of profit, which might not be much, but that's going to add up. <laughs> that would add up to about 60 bucks profit in the month and about $720 throughout the year. And that is just on Taco Tuesday. That's not including all the random promotion props that they toss out to us, prize picks and underdog. Now for what it's worth, underdog does not let you do that. Typically speaking, they're going to give us these uh, promotions that are out there. And so with them, typically it's going to be like a max of $10 on an extremely discounted square or a flash sale is what they call them as well. And for instance, here's one that underdog had ran out there for Valentine's Day as a Valentine's Day promotion. Clever for them with the whole Bay discount. Anyways, this ended up hitting, but you can only bet one bet and a max of $10, but still an extremely discounted square, the same processes apply that you would use with the taco Tuesday. You're just doing one bet instead of five. Now, I don't want to say you have to do one bet, or I'm not saying you have to do five individual bets for Taco Tuesday. That's just an example. Have a strategy and stick to it. This is how, though, I was able to give you guys prop bets for the bet of the day that ending up hitting as frequently as it did, about 60% of the time, giving us a total profit of 500 units on the year. Now, some people that might not know what EV betting is or what a good EV bet is. I'm going to show you guys this one right here. This is a screenshot from one of the college basketball videos I did. And this will get into another point that I have. Uh, looking at this one, so rebounds right here for Tomlin. The average sportsbook line, when we take out the juice, and this is pulling in several sportsbooks, I'm pulling in the averages this is taken from my 9 to 5 sports prize picks cheat sheet, which can be found on the website for just $10 a month. If you guys want access to that, check that out. But this is collecting all the data from those sportsbooks, taking the over line, taking the under line, taking the prop line itself, and then just putting a percent on it, taking out the juice and whatnot. And so we can see this prop at here specifically had a 56% likelihood to hit for his under of 6.5 rebounds. Okay. And that was true across the board here. That is a good EV bet. That would be a good bet to attach to the Taco Tuesday discounts or really any discounted prop that we are getting throughout the week on both prize picks and underdog. Now this fantasy score stuff, I'm going to get into a second because that is a whole nother edge that we have. That's a whole nother part of this video. I want to get into in just a second, but I do want to talk about flex Friday as well. Just another variation of discounts that are out there. So flex Friday is a thing that happens weekly on prize picks. It's uh, a protected play. So basically you can bet up to $20 on Friday and you have to do one of those flex slips. And so you take the prop bets that are there on the board for today, that day, the good EV bets that you currently have available, and you do a flex slip. Now, whether you do a three slip flex, uh, flex bet, that's up to you. If you do a four slip flex bet, that's up to you. Uh, but these are going to be the payouts for those. A lot of people either like to do six or about four on flex Friday. But if your bet misses, it's going to be refunded to you in the form of credit on the website. And so typically speaking, if you guys are just betting on Flex Friday and Taco Tuesday, if you wanted to do that, well, that $20 that you spend, if you were to lose, would then go into the, the Taco Tuesday props that you're going to be running out on Tuesday as well. So it's not too much of a uh, money difference. And either way, you're eventually going to hit a Flex Friday. And that's obviously going to be great, right? And so the Flex Friday stuff is risk-free money that people should be taking advantage of. And so really for the bad of the day, measuring the unit it's one. I, I kind of like that day because it's not anything I have to worry about in terms of knocking the money that we're winning on Flex Friday, because again, it's just free money that they're trying to toss at us and we just got to take advantage of it properly. So I do think that kind of sums up just like promos, how just using promos can be a good advantage for us in terms of profitability throughout the year. Okay. Flex Fridays, again, you're not losing money. The discounts, that's going to be something that yields you profit in the long term. Heck, in the short term, it can be as well. Like over the Super Bowl, like leading up to the Super Bowl, there's like a discounted square each day on both prize picks and underdog. Hopefully, people are able to take advantage of that. Now, you're not going to hit it every time, right? These prop bets have about a 54, 55% likelihood to hit. That is their expected hit rate. At the same time, if you're pairing that with the discounted squares or with the Flex Friday props, you are going to get an advantage over prize picks and underdog in the long term. And that's really what we're banking on is the long term success. I'll reference this chart again. You guys will see 
two bad months mixed in there in June and August. Now, most people probably know that at least follow the channel. I had a, I had a kid around this time. So like, honestly, that could be the reason why it wasn't as good. Just not enough volume on the month in that month. And you guys will see very low uh, amount of bets in total during that month. And that is kind of a key thing. Like again, in the long term, if you are doing these processes and these strategies, they're going to be profitable in the long term. And that is something I want to call out. Now, you're going to see that in a weird way, our best month was July, even though picks wise, it was one of the worst. So that tells me we probably got lucky with a couple six for sixes during that month, which is huge. Obviously, that's going to be a bigger payout. Uh, whereas uh, in June and August, you know, only 52% of the bets hit, which guys, this is an insanely good hit rate, like 60% of the season that is awesome but how were we able to do that right like that is that is crazy good like which prop bets were we able to use well i already mentioned the promos but the ev bets is something i mentioned but i have it right down below fantasy score prop bets are one of the biggest edges on prize space and underdog now i'm gonna go ahead and use this screenshot from earlier when i referenced the ev betting with rebounds but look at some of these fantasy score prop bets they have an insanely high percent likelihood to hit on a given day and i'll show you the cheat sheet right now this is for college basketball still i'm recording this during the nba all-star break like we're not getting any good prop bets there's no hockey games today there's really no good prop bets the one really good one that we have today is gonna to be this fantasy score prop bet okay 54 percent likely to hit and so again referencing the screenshot typically speaking those are going to be the best bets that we have on a daily basis and the nice thing about it is when you compare it to prize space and underdog you can kind of see where you are getting the biggest edge and so i'm going to use this one right here as an example or these two hunter dickinson right here uh we take the prize space line at 36.5 we see the underdog line at 34.05 and then we see the average sportsbook line would be set at 30 and at 30 they would slightly be fair in the over don't get me wrong but collectively when we put that line up against the 36.5 line that is on prize picks that is giving us a 55.6 percent edge on price picks, we can see the price picks line that we are getting there when we look at the projection data, when we look at the average sports line. Heck, when we look at the underdog line, that is a clear outlier. The price picks line is the clear outlier. We are getting a big edge on that. And so by chasing these prop bets that are the most favorable on each site per day, regardless of if we have promos or not, like a, a great bet on the day for this day would have been Hunter Dickinson for under his fantasy score and then Wade Taylor for over his fantasy score for the exact opposite reason. We can see underdog or prize picks right here with the over fantasy score is clearly the outlier. The line at 35.5 should clearly be higher. And so here's just one example of someone using the Taco Tuesday discounted square with one of the best fantasy score prop bets that we had available on the day that day on Tuesday. And again, you don't have to with these discounted squares, with these Taco Tuesdays, you don't have to run out the five slips individually, but just stick to a strategy specifically with Taco Tuesday, whether it's doing a four slip bet, five slip bet, six slip bet on Taco Tuesday. And mathematically, you're supposed to do six slip bets, just as an FYI. Uh, but I know the average person doesn't like kind of the roller coaster of that. That's why I recommend the five individual slips. But this is a good example of using the top fantasy score prop bets with a discounted square and how that can be profitable. And here's another example of someone just mixing and matching the top prop bets that we had on the day with their Flex Friday slip and they were able to have profit. Now, guys, I'm, I'm showing you good screenshots. Like you're not always going to hit this much, like 500 units. We still... On the, on the year, right? We still had 40% of the prop bets missed last year. So again, not gonna always hit. And another thing I wanna point out is that with those uh, fantasy score prop bets, a lot of the times we do see a discrepancy between prize picks and underdog with their lines, which shouldn't ever happen. And I'll get into more of that in a second here with like PGA and whatnot. Middling can be a very good, uh, successful long-term strategy. I put it like as the last of the strategies that are gonna help you be successful, but it is just another element to it. So here's a college basketball prop. You can see on underdog, the fantasy score was set at 37.25. And then on underdog that same day, or on prize picks that same day, it was set at 34.5. Okay, so got a little bit lucky here, but that's kind of the point. Like when a line is that clearly wrong, like again, three for a fantasy score should not be the case. And for what's worth, guys, the fantasy score scoring is the same on both prize picks and underdog for basketball. For football, it's a little bit different. You have I, on the website, I have to do a calculation for that uh, to adjust for half point versus full point PPR. But it's the same stuff, right? We're still comparing the same lines. And these lines are determined by all these other data points that are out there. Points, rebounds, and assists. Well, it's just points, assists, rebounds separately, and then blocks and steals as well. And then turnovers. That's what goes into the fantasy score calculation on a given day. So I do want to get into this middling 
uh, talk in a second more here, but I want to show you guys another successful fantasy score prop bet. So for me, the two most successful are college basketball and NBA fantasy score prop bets. I would say college basketball, then NBA. But this other one was extremely successful during the summer and fall. And so again, here's just a screenshot from earlier on in 2023 during the summer. The hitting fantasy score prop bets, I noticed that we are getting a lot of big prop line differences between what the average sportsbook line would have the data and then what my projection data would have the line at. And we saw this be a pretty significant edge. So basically, when a line would be over the prop line difference of the average uh, prize picks line of eight, let's say for this example, Corey Seager, the Vegas line would actually have it set at really 11. <laughs> And then the projection data a little bit less, but at 10.4. So we were getting a big prop line difference of at least two for a fantasy score. Again, that should really never happen. And so this is just a tweet from way back when, let's see, September 8th, uh, the Flex Friday slip hitting with using the hitting fantasy score prop bets. And that was a significant thing uh, that really helped during the MLB season. I'm wondering if they're going to adjust it. They did start to do that at the tail end of the playoffs where the hitting fantasy score prop bets were not as huge. Whereas the pitching fantasy score prop bets actually got a little bit better during the playoffs. And that also brings me into my next point with the middling. And for those of you guys that are wondering what middling is, well, you can look at it in terms of discrepancies. It's the prop line differences between prize picks and underdog. Again, those are the two most prominent uh, DFS prop sites that are out there right now. Okay. And they're typically occur in sports or esports that are just not as popular. So I'll show you guys an example from today's video I just did, which was a Flex Friday video. It's probably why I'm referencing Flex Friday more than I should be. But here was a big prop line difference for tennis. Like this is something that shouldn't be happening. So you can see 10.5 is the aces for the top line and our underdog has said 12.5. There should never be a difference like that. And then same thing for uh, Typho especially at such a low number for it to be off by 1.5. That is a big prop line difference. And I'm going to use golf as an example of a lot of middling opportunities that occur as well. So this is something that I do cover pretty extensively. I have my own database for this as well. I've been doing this for like seven years. You know, the database, the knowledge goes pretty deep on this. I actually started my own nine to five golf YouTube channel and Twitter channel, because that's how kind of important it is to me. And that's really the biggest edges that we have. I, I just wanted to create a whole separate segment so I could dive into it a little bit deeper on a per day basis. But PGA was a source for a lot of successful six for six slips so much so that I think myself and another person in the uh, golf space that was covering it, I'll give him a shout out. He goes by GS Luke on YouTube. And again, I'll get into that more in a second, but there are still a lot of great middling opportunities earlier on. And this was crazy. <laughs> Underdog was giving us insane greens and regulations props. And this does occur a decent amount. And so the tournament average for greens and regulation at this tournament we're playing at this week was 9.81. Okay, this was round one. So the live prop line is going to be the same. But anyways, they had it set at 13.5. That was seemingly a massive edge. <laughs> like what was going on? Especially when you compare it to the prize picks line of 12. It should never, especially in golf, it should never be more than a half, if anything. But it was 1.5. That does occur a decent amount. And it, the lines are typically out there a little bit longer than they should. And so I did mention like the PGA props were a source of a great profitability last year. I think most of our six for six slips actually came from there because there was a lot of one big prop line differences between prize picks and underdog, but two, because the lines were typically terrible and you could stack these and they wouldn't shift the payout at all. That is something that has become, and this was the same slip on underdog here that someone ran out. And these are just screenshots from my Twitter. Uh, people added me that I'm, I'm showing you guys here, but nowadays, if you were to run this out, the payout would be a little bit different. But again, this is an explanation video of showing you guys how we were able to benefit from the mistakes that underdog and price were making last year to have 500 units profit. And that's not to say that like, oh, we can't do that anymore. No, we can still do that. What you would want to do with golf specifically there is just run out them more individually. So the payout shift is not as dr drastic. That happens in NBA now. That happens in NFL. That is something that they have done to combat the edges that we had. Now, there's always going to be more edges that pop up. That is something that I have noticed. 
noticed as well. Right now, it is going to be those college basketball props again. Like that is a big edge that I have noticed. And so those are just small little nuanced ways that you can give yourself an advantage over prize picks and underdog. Don't just make a random bet to make a bet. That's I think people do that a ton where they'll just come in and just do a bet just to do a bet. No, have the research behind why a good prop bet is a good prop bet. And if you continue to make those good decisions in the long term, you're going to be successful. Now, not every day is going to be a good day. Not every Taco Tuesday is going to be a good day. You're not going to hit every discounted square. That is just naturally going to happen. But if you keep making the correct decisions in the long term, finding your edges, and that's the thing as well, those uh, MLB hitting fancy score prop bets, that was something I didn't really find out myself until midway through the season. And I was like, wow, these are hitting at an insanely great rate. Let's continue to target those. And you'll be able to find out kind of what edges you are seeing and how you're being successful. And you can always kind of just tweak your strategy here and there. But this was my example of showing you guys how were you able to be successful in 2023. And I did just want to touch on this a little bit more. So I am very much someone that practices what he preaches. This, the content I give out is for the average person. It's nine to five sports. Like that should tell you guys all you need to know. Like I'm, I'm really concentrating on the average person here. And so what I did last year is for the bad of the day, all the bets that I did for the bad of the day specifically were $5 unit bets because that kind of going back to that interview I had, that's what they suggested was kind of the standard bet size, maybe not the average bet size, but but the, the best size that was bet the most was $5. So that is what I did last year. And so this season, or I should say for 2024, I'm doing more of $15 unit bets is going to be the average bet slip for the units of measure that I'm doing. Okay. I just want to make that clear. Like some people are going to come in and say $5 unit bets. That, that's like not that big. You know, it was over, that was $2,500 of profit. If someone had just come in and just did the bet of the day each, each day. And it is a grind. That is something I want to call as well. But yeah, this year, and I'm doing the $15 unit bets this year as a standard measure. One, because I wanted to bet more myself for the bet of the days. That's typically the best bet that we have. But it's because I was doing research on this. That is the standard, well, it's the standard bet size for an individual per bet is about 10 to $20. So, you know, me in the middle, $15. Okay. And so as it sits right now, if we look at 2024, we have been on an insane hit streak in January. It was crazy guys. That is not a sustainable streak. And we actually are seeing that come down in this month of February. Okay. It's, it's not going to be that good. I can almost guarantee that this was clearly an outlier. Okay. And I just want to people to know that, like, I know that you guys should know that that's an outlier. And so like in the month of February, March, I wouldn't be surprised if we have one where the total percent and the units one is significantly lower or even negative, like we had twice last year, but so far so good in 2024. And then just to recap how to be successful prop betting, take advantage of the promos that are out there on both prize picks and underdog. If you're playing on another site, be on the lookout for those. Sleeper has been putting out a lot more discounted squares. Use the correct fantasy score prop bets. Use the EV bets, okay? That's going to be what's successful. You know, Vegas has been in business for a long time for a reason. They know what they're doing. And so by comparing the prize picks lines versus and the underdog lines versus the average sportsbook line, we can see when we are gaining an edge or not gaining an edge. And by placing those bets that have a good percent likelihood to hit, we are going to be successful in the long term. Another way is by chasing those fantasy score prop bets that are going to have a big prop line difference between prize base and underdog. We see that a lot, a lot in college basketball and NBA. Now, I didn't really touch on NBA. There are a lot of times where you can kind of make an educated stack on a team when, let's say, like with the Bucks, if Giannis were questionable for a game, if you wanted to run out a stack with Dame Lillard for the over fantasy score or PRA, if that's available, Brooke Lopez, like Bobby Portis, you could also do that as well. That's a kind of sneaky way to gain an edge, but that'd be a strategy that you'd have to stick to in the long term. And that's an another point I want to make. Stick to the same strategies, okay? And if they're not working, adjust those strategy, but stick to the same strategy, specifically bet slip size. I, I think that's a common mistake I see people make. And then just target those middling opportunities, okay? There should never be big prop line differences, okay? That is a huge thing. And then I hate to say it, but volume is kind of king. Like give yourself a long enough sample size to see whether or not something is working. But that is gonna be all for this video. I hope it hopefully guys helps you. If, if it did, make sure to give a like and subscribe to this channel. This is a little bit of a sponsored post, I guess, if if you will. If you guys want access to the cheat sheets or prize picks and underdog, head on over to 9to5sports.com. They're available for just $10 a month. You should be able to make that money back, hopefully, pretty much right away. But it's just a good resource for you guys to 
make the best decisions possible on a given slate. That's going to be all. Thanks for watching. And as always, let's keep cashing.